So hello, welcome back. And uh, so now what we are going to do is try to set up a server so that we can uh, use a server for running our node. Uh, we previously installed a virtual box. You can use whatever option you prefer. Or if you already have a computer running Linux, you don't really need to do this. You can run the node in your computer. Again, this is for educational purposes. Later on, if you decide to go for a professional stake pool, you will have to decide what is the best architecture and the best platform for you. Okay, and today I'm going to be using Amazon Web Services for this just because I have an account, an account here. And uh, actually, we want you to, to look for what is the best server for you. Most server will be configured like the same way. Uh, there is nothing... Uh, that uh, is particular to Amazon that makes us choose it right now for this tutorial. This is just that just the case that I have an account here, right? But there are many server providers that have an amazing, amazing services, amazing options. So, so just go and look for the best for you. And so here we have a, a tutorial, very detailed on how to set up a server on Amazon. And to do that, we want to go to Amazon. If you don't have an account, you will need to create one. And, but the first thing you want to do here is to sign into the console. Yes, root user, and this is me, Carlos Lopez Alana, and Next, and the password. Let's see if I remember my password. Hopefully I do. Yes, I do. Okay, so I am here, and what you need to do, to do is to come here to All Services and EC2. You want to come here to Launch Instance. Launch Instance. And there are plenty of, of options that you may choose. There are different versions of Linux that you can have. In this case, today, as we show in the tutorial, we are going to be using a very particular flavor of Linux, which is uh, Amazon Linux to AMI HVM SSD volume type, which is exactly what we are going to do. So let me just look for that. Let me just close this one. And we don't really need that anymore. So it was. Uh, was that let me just confirm the I don't really need this either so we are here yes we're gonna choose this one and so the next thing you want to do here is to choose a t2 medium uh, anything below that will not be in the capacity to uh, compile the node. So just the medium one will do because we need at least four gigabytes of memory to compile the node. Then you can click on next. And there is nothing really to configure here. Next, the size. Let me just come here and change the size. I will need at least 24, let's make 30 gigabytes in of memory disk, disk space, and tax, nothing in tax right now. And one important thing here that you may want to do is uh, just choose your IP. And just because uh, if you leave the default here anywhere, this is not secure enough because uh, any machine will be uh, able to connect to your to your to your server, right? So you want to make it 
that only you from that particular IP can connect to your server, okay? That's for security purposes, security reasons. And right now we are running it uh, like for fun in the testnet. You will be running the node in a, in a testnet. But if you are to do it professionally as a stable operator, you may want to take all the precautions uh, to make your node secure, okay? Then you can go to review and launch. And from here, what we want to do is, uh, yeah, there's nothing more to change here. And everything is looking good. We can just launch. And this is an important step. Uh, you will need to create SSH keys. So those will identify you as, as you uh, for connecting to your server. So if you already have a key for connecting to an Amazon Web Server, you already have that. And you can use that very same uh, keys. But if you don't, you want to create a new keeper. What you don't want is to say proceed without a keeper. Just don't do that. Okay. So create a new keeper and we are going to name it relay. And as you can see here, you have to download the private key file dot PEM before you can continue. To store it in a secure and accessible location, you will not be able to download the file again after it is created. So this is the moment to download the keeper to your local machine. Let's just do that. And now this button, Launch Instances, is enabled. So click on Launch Instances. And your instance are now launching. You can click here in this button that says View Instances. And as you can see, this is the one that I am just creating. It's suspending. I also have a couple more uh, servers running, uh, but the one that we are creating now, it is pending and you want to wait for it to say running. Once it is running, you can connect to that and proceed with the rest of the, uh, of the tasks that we are going to be doing during this course, okay? So just, Wait, it takes very little time, as you can see, and just select that one and connect. If you are on a Windows machine, you will need a, to read this tutorial, connect using PuTTY. Uh, this is a very uh, important thing for you if you are using Windows, again, if you are using Windows, please come here and read this entire material because this is what will allow you to connect to your server. Later on, we will have also a tutorial, we have a, a video on how to do it, but you will need to, create, to, to follow this tutorial to connect to using PuTTY, okay? This is for Windows users only. If you are on Mac OS or if you already have a Linux machine, you don't really need this one, okay? So, if as you remember, I just downloaded my, my key. It is this one, relay.pm. Let me just uncover me. And let me just, for ease of use, uh, copy that one to my home folder, to my home directory. Let me just uh, paste it here and that will be, okay? And the easiest way to connect to your server is uh, using a standalone SSH client. Uh, for that, you will need to run a terminal. If you are on macOS, I strongly recommend uh, using the terminal that I use, not the normal terminal that comes uh, with macros, which would be this one. But the terminal that I use is iTerm. It is a much powerful terminal. So just a quick recommendation. So I'm going to use a new window here.
And from here, oops, let me just grab this line. You can simply come copy and paste it here. This is why I moved my, uh, my, my private key to the home folder because my default folder for my terminal is the home. So I already have my keys there. So you copy the app command that will allow you to connect to your server using SSH. You here can say yes. And there you go. You are, oh, what happened? This is a common mistake, no worries at all. And the thing here is that right now, my, my secret key, my private key here is accessible to all the users in my computer. If I had any other uh, user, uh, those also have access to this file. So what we need to do is change the permissions for this file so that it belongs only to me and no other user in the, of the computer can use that file to connect to the server, right? So we just say, too much people can have access to this, uh, to this uh, file potentially, right? So we change the permissions with chmod 400 relay. And then we simply come here and use, again, this command. Nice trick. If you have already pasted the command as I do, uh, you can navigate the history of the commands that you have paste uh, done run with your up or down arrows and simply enter and there we are we are here and uh, we are happy to be here because we are connected to our uh, server so it's much faster than than with uh, a virtual box because there is nothing to that you have to install so this is it this is how you create your server on Amazon. See you in the next video where we are going to be diving directly into the most important part, perhaps the part that uh, gives the more uh, headaches to, to people running the node is installing the node itself. It's very easy, but there are like, many things can go wrong. So just, just uh, see you in the next video. We will have a lot of fun there.